Welcome to our last class of fall semester 2021. I'm your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to be discussing radioactive decay. What on earth is radioactive decay? This is my rendition of a rock of uranium. Radioactive substances emit energetic particles known as alpha particles. Here's alpha, beta particles, and gamma particles, and other kinds of particles too. And that's what makes them so dangerous is that those particles cause damage to our cells and that can result in cancer and often does result in cancer. On the other hand, radioactive particles are also used to destroy cancer cells. So that's pretty good. That's what radi radiation treatment is. Well, here we have some radioactive substances and we're going to calculate either the decay rate or the half-life. I've given you um, um, a, a kind of in English casual definition of half-life. Half-life is the amount of time in seconds, minutes, days, years, centuries, whatever, even nanoseconds, I suppose. Um, the number of uh, the amount of time a radioactive substance needs to decay to half its original mass. And the mass of an object is the stuff composing it. We all have mass. OK. So what we're going to do is now in blue, these are the answers we're trying to find. All right. So for polonium, we're given the half-life in minutes and we're asked to find the decay rate. All right, so let's set this up. The general formula for radioactive growth and decay is the same formula. A equals A naught E to the KT. When you have exponential growth, K is a positive number. When you have exponential decay, K is a negative number. So for the problems we're doing today, instead of K being the growth rate, it's going to be the decay rate. Now we're trying to find We're trying to find the decay rate given we are given the half-life. And A naught, you recall, is the amount of the substance you start with, the amount of matter or mass in the object. <clears throat> and this is a radioactive substance, so it's decaying into other elements. All right, let's make this larger. In 3.1 minutes, any particular mass of uranium, well, not uranium, but polonium, okay, polonium, any particular mass of polonium is going to decay to half of its original amount. Since A naught is the original amount, one half of A naught is one half of the original amount. So let's write this in a more understandable way. One half times A naught equals A naught 
times e to the 3.1 k. And we're trying to find k. And that's an e, supposed to be an e. All right, the first thing I always do in solving one of these equations is I divide by the number in front of e. That causes it to cancel out. Notice how close this is to doubling time, where you're left with only a two over here. Now we're left with one half. All right, so I take the ln of one half equals the ln of e to the 3.1k. That allows me to use the power rule to bring down a number in front. So we'll have the ln of one half equals 3.1k times the ln of e, which equals one. And you can put that in your calculator to find out for sure. The ln of e is one. So I'm going to mark it out because 3.1k times 1 is just 3.1k. All right, now before I divide both sides by 3.1, I am going to use the quotient rule over here. The ln of 1 minus the ln of 2 equals 3.1 K. Now, if you put the ln of 1 in your calculator, you'll find out that the ln of 1 is 0. So this is going to be 0 minus the ln of 2 equals 3.1 K. Now, I am going to a lot of extra steps here that after a while, after you're familiar with this, you won't you won't need to, to, um, to use all these steps. But until then, I want to make sure that what I'm doing is completely understandable. Zero minus the ln of two is, well, is negative the ln of two and that equals 3.1k. Then I divide by 3.1, and I divide by 3.1. The 3.1s cancel over here on the right, and I'm left with k equals negative the ln of 2 over 3.1. Now, just like the, uh, uh, the other day, when we were working uh, uh, problems that dealt with exponential growth, population growth, continuous compounding, speculation, this is the exact answer for K. or as exact as we can get it, 3.1 might or might not be a rounded number. However, the instructions tell us, do not round until the final answer and then round to four decimal places as needed. I'm going to take this and put it in my calculator. Uh, negative the ln 
of two, close parentheses, divided by 3.1, enter. Okay. So K equals, looking at the calculator, excuse me, negative 0 0.2, two, two, three, five, followed by a nine. See, how could I even write that? So you see, that's the reason I like to copy. I like to copy this, is that way, anyone looking at these notes will know exactly the answer I got on the calculator. There. Okay, we'll flatten that. Now, we're supposed to round to four decimal places. What? Right. One, two, three, four. That's 0.2235, negative. And, and the five is followed by a nine, which will cause the five to round up to a six. So K equals negative 0 0.2236, only we can't do that this time. And I'll show you why. So I'm going to erase this anyway. Here's why. We can't just go ahead and round to four decimal places yet. Because we're looking for this number. We're looking for the decay rate. I'll explain why it's positive in a minute. But the decay rate is given as a percent. So we're going to have to turn this number into a percent by multiplying it by 100. You can do this in your calculator. You can say times 100, enter. And now here's the number we have. No, I don't like that. Let's just put them both together. Okay. Now I can round. I couldn't round before. Because then I would have actually lost some decimal places. So now look at this. Instead of one, one, two, three, four, that's totally wrong. Because I had not changed to a percent. Now one, two, three, four, four decimal places, 
followed by an eight, which will cause the final des decimal place, the fourth decimal place, to round up to a six. And that means that K equals negative 22.3 five, nine, six per cent. But why is this number negative and this number positive? This is going to seem strange to you, but if, if that column well, actually, I can stay here. If that column had said growth rate, or if it had said rate of change, then I would have left the negative there. But it doesn't say that, so I'm going to erase it. Doesn't say rate of change. Doesn't say growth rate. Says decay rate, which automatically tells me that that percent is negative. I don't have to write a negative sign in front because this is called the decay rate. So for that reason, if we call the decay rate the decay rate, we write the rate, the rate percent, as a positive because anyone working a problem with it will know that that's going to be negative automatically. Okay, now we've spent a lot of time talking about that. Let's do some more problems. Here's radioactive iodine. I have a thyroid operation that I had when I was a child, and I was given radioactive iodine for a while. People are still given radioactive iodine. Um, okay, so here we're given the decay rate. This is the decay rate, and it's called that. So let's write it here. And if you recall, this is the half-life. Okay, now we're being asked to find the half-life, and we don't officially know what that is, uh, but we are given the decay rate. So observe this. If this is the decay rate, then K equals negative 0 0.0115. Okay. We take the 1.115 divided by 100, we get 0, 0.0115. And the uh, negative sign is just part of the translation. K is negative whenever the decay rate, well, whenever it is the decay rate. Okay, so let's go back. This is C. Again, I write the basic general equation for all exponential growth and exponential decay. A equals A naught 
e to the k t. Only now we know what the decay rate is. So this will be a equals a naught, the initial amount, times e to the negative 0 0.0115 times the time in days, it says days right here. All right, now if I want to find the half-life, and that's what this column is, it's the half-life, then I am going to have to change A to one half A naught. Because one half of the original amount is the amount after time, which is what A is. All right, we're going to solve this for T. First, I divide the A naught out. And just the fact that I can do this means that this rate and the half-life are independent of the amount of mass I start with. One half equals E to the negative 0.0 zero one one five t t is up in the air i'm gonna have to bring it down to ground level by using logarithms and since there's an e in this equation i have to use the ln because the ln of e is one which is terribly convenient ln of one half equals the ln of e to the negative 0.0115t. Okay, over here, I'm going to use the quotient rule, ln one minus ln two, and that equals negative 0.0115t times the ln of e, which is one, one. Not only that, let me put in equals one here. The ln of one is zero. So this is zero minus the ln of two equals negative 0.0115t times one, which is negative 0.0115t. Okay, I am going to divide both sides by negative 0.0115 and negative 0 0.0115. Meanwhile, up here, of course, zero minus the ln of two is just negative the ln of two. So our final answer, or our exact answer, or as close to exact as we can get, is Negative, uh, negative ln2 over negative 0 0.0115. And that equals, let's cancel that, cancel that. That equals T, the time in days. So now I have a negative number divided by a negative number. The negatives will cancel out. So let's do this. I don't want that. 
OK. There we go. Clear. There. Now you can see negative ln of two close parentheses divided by negative 0 0.0115. Enter. And here we go. I have this answer. They're asking for four decimal places for, for the entire table, I believe. Yes, they are. Okay. So, one. Where's my black? Right there. That's right. Okay. There's our answer. And. Here's what I put in the calculator. Now notice the difference here. Time is in days. We certainly don't want it to be negative. So it was essential that both of these numbers be negative. Now that you know when you're dealing with time, the answer will be positive. It would have been a little bit easier, but not a lot easier to, to just let the, the uh, negative signs cancel each other. OK, now let's count one, two, three, four. That six is going to cause that six to round up to a seven. So T equals 60.2737 days. Let's see. Yes. We're not going to turn days into a percent. We are going to turn K into a percent, but notice how similar these are. I think it's terrific. OK, now. Radioactive lead, and I believe there is such a thing as radioactive lead. Again, we're being asked to find the, the percent decay rate. And we're given the number, we're given the time, the half-life. Okay. Here we have A equals A naught E to the KT. This is our general formula for both exponential growth and decay. What's going to make this exponential decay is that k will be a negative number. Not the percent, but the decay. A decay rate, k. K, 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 k. Um, okay, so we're talking about half-life. This is the half-life. So one half times the original amount equals the original amount 
times e to the k times 10.7. So ooh, let's divide out a naught. Cancel, ooh, cancel. I'm curving. So we'll have one half equals e to the 10.7k. And then I'm gonna do the same thing all over. Take the ln of one side, Use the uh, power rule, use the quotient rule. Ln, Ln. Okay, now, the Ln of one minus the Ln of two equals 10.7K times the Ln of E which is one. So 10.7 K equals, the ln of one is zero, so zero minus ln two. Then I'll divide by 10.7, 10.7, so K equals negative LN2 over 10.7. Now let's put that in the calculator. Negative LN2. Yes, divided by 10.7. Now remember, we're looking for a percent. So here's my decay rate as a, as a decimal. What I'm going to do is multiply it by 100. There now. Hmm, yes. There we are. Now, once we multiply by 100, this becomes a percent. <coughs> so, one, two, three, four. The one will not cause the zero to round up to a one. So this is going to be our decay rate. That is, it's going to be the rate of change. You can think of it this way, the rate of change is negative 6.4780%, but the decay rate is 
says that that number is negative. So we don't need the negative sign. The decay rate is 6.4780%. Let's double check that. I'm pretty sure it's right. Yeah. Now, again, now we're going, going to be finding time, which is the half-life. Whoop, lib, half lib, I don't think so. Half life. And here we have the decay rate. So we have to change this to a decimal. 3.151 and make it negative because it is a decay rate. And that's what K, we put in equals there, is going to be. Now, if you're unsure, just use your calculator. 315.1%, okay, will change to a decimal if I divide by 100. 3.151. Now we know what K is. Here's our general formula. This is half-life, so we're looking for one-half A-naught equals A-naught, the original amount, times E to the negative 3.151T. And now I go through the same exact process. First, I divide out A-naught. Cancel, 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 cancel. That leaves me with one half equals E to the negative 3.151 T. Then I take the LN of both sides. I can't bring down the exponent and I can't you cannot use the quotient rule until I've got LNs. LNs are wonderful when you're jammed up. So I'll use the quotient rule here, LN 1 minus LN 2 equals negative 3.151t times the ln of e, which is 1. Okay. So, uh, so negative 3.151t equals 0 minus ln 2, and then I divide by negative 3.151, negative 3.151. I cancel out the negative 3.151 on the right, 
that gives me a T, that gives me a negative LN2 over negative 3.151, and I put that in my calculator. Notice that T is time. Is it days? Minutes. It's minutes. Okay. But it's time. So you don't have to make that into a percent. It's kind of hard to keep all this stuff straight. Okay, negative LN2. Close parentheses. Divided by negative 3.151. Enter. And I get point, well, I get this. So I'm going to double check first. Yeah, look at that, that's beautiful. Okay. All right, we want one, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four. Decimal places. Followed by a seven. Now this is why this problem is so much fun. The seven causes the nine to round up to a 10. I carry the one. 1 plus 9 is 10. I carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Bring down that 2. Bring down the decimal point. And put a 0 in front. It can help you. The calculator doesn't need it, but sometimes you need it. That is a horrifically small part of the day, minute, of a minute. One minute is 60 seconds. I wonder what point 22 times 60 would be. Thirteen point two seconds. I mean, really. All right. Well, we could keep going on and on and on. Let's see if we can find anything really interesting in that original table. Now that looks interesting, doesn't it? Plutonium. I don't know if there's really a plutonium 240, but there are plutonium isotopes that are horrifically dangerous and long lived. Look at that. And that's only the time to decaying to half of what's there originally. Then you have to deal with the rest of it. 
OK, we're given the time. We're going to find the decay rate of this isotope of plutonium. And again, I don't know that it really exists. Oh, well, I better copy it. Certainly not going to memorize it. There it is. Okay. So this is what we're going to be dealing with. So here we go, now we're trying to find K, which is the decay rate. Let me get rid of the K temporarily. Rate. Okay, wow. All right, here's our general formula. A equals A not E to the KT. Okay, we're given the half-life, so let's plug that in. Half-life. One half A naught, one half of the original amount equals the original amount times E to the K times 6561 years. Okay, I'm going to divide out A naught. So that I'll have one half equals E to the 6561K. And then I take the LN of both sides. And so I'll have LN1 minus LN2 equals 6561K times the LN of E which is one. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Which is one. LN, K is a one. The LN of E is one. Okay, so zero minus the LN of two equals six, five, six, one, K. Because the LN of E is one, 65, 61, K, times one is 6561K. Now I divide both sides by 6561. 6561. Boom, boom. So that K equals negative LN2 
over 6561. All right, let's go to the calculator. Negative ln2, close paren, divided by 6, Five, six, one. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, that's not a one. One. Six, five, six, one. Enter. Whoa. We're going to have to do some translating here. But before, look at that, look at that. This is in scientific notation. Uh, before we do this, Let's go ahead and change this to a percent by multiplying by 100. There now. So the calculator freaked out a little bit up here, but then once we multiplied by 100, it's okay now. Got over its anxiety attack. Okay, so There's my percent. One, two, three, four, followed by a six, that six will cause the five to round up to a six. So let's try to make something absolutely clear. And I have room to do it above here. K equals negative 0.0106%. That's what K equals. The decay rate, which already uses a word that means negative, doesn't need the negative sign. So, you just write 0 0.0106. And they provide, my math lab provides uh, the percent sign and the per year. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is radioactive decay.